Hello everyone, my name is Jackie. In this video, I'm showing you guys how to create crispy inspired thumbnail in Photoshop. So let's get started. The point of this video is to not encourage you to copy Crispy's style, but instead to get inspired especially if you are into testing games and benchmarking videos as well. Before that, we need to identify the recipe what makes the Crispy's thumbnails good. As you can see here, he put a gameplay screenshot with the subject as the main focus, and then he put a lot of context labels and use gradients on the right side. Each gradients have their own meanings. You can use that as reference. And lastly, you may need to include your FPS counter overlay, your reaction picture and the game title PNG. Once you are in Photoshop, create a new document. For YouTube thumbnails, you can set 720p resolution as the document size. For the pixel density, you can leave it at 300 ppi and color mode at 16-bit. And then click create. To find the gameplay screenshot, you can watch the clip of the game that you are testing and find the best moments that looks good to be a thumbnail. In this case for example, I'm testing Cyberpunk and I'm going to capture this moment to be a thumbnail. So right click and select your preferred method to capture that image. When you are in Photoshop, you can drag that image into the canvas. This method are much easier since you already have your FPS counter overlay attached. But if you are too lazy, you can find the image on Google that are related to your video. But for the sake of this video, let's just assume that everyone is lazy. So for this example, I will create a thumbnail for GTA 6 benchmark video. It would be even better if you can do with minimal or without the HUD, so that your thumbnail will look cleaner overall. After you have found the image that you want to use, you can start with drag that image into the canvas. Hit apply, you can put that layer into a group by pressing Ctrl plus G and then double click on it to rename the layer if you want to be more organized. Now if you don't have your FPS counter overlay attached to this image, you need to import it separately or just create it from scratch according to your design in the video. If you wish to create from scratch, you can start with creating the levels adjustment layer. Adjust the darkness for the background frame accordingly. Select the layer mask, and then press Ctrl plus I to invert the mask. Zoom in and pan the canvas by holding the space on your keyboard. Pick the rectangular marquee tool, and then make a square like this size for example. Press X to toggle between white and black color on your color panel. And then press alternate plus backspace to fill in the selected area with the darkening effect. Press Ctrl plus D to deselect. Now pick your text tool and start imitating your FPS counter overlay like in the video. Adjust the font and size based on your FPS counter overlay. You can take as much time as you want to make it look similar. I don't want to bore you to death here, so I will just import mine into the canvas to save some time. As you can see here, my FPS counter overlay already imported into the canvas. You can see the before and after. You can also lock these two groups to avoid troubles. Now we need to put the GPU name on this upper right corner according to the GPU that you are testing. For that, pick the text tool again and then name your GPU there. You can adjust the marching ants to make it snap to the edge. Select all the text, and then align it to the right. And now type in your GPU name. In this case I'm testing the RTX 5090 Ti Super Ti. So for the first line, I will fill it with the RTX 5090 Ti. You can change the font to Agency FB Bold which is similar to what Crispy usually use. If you don't have the font, you can download it on Google. To install it, you just need to double click and then press install. Hit yes, and then adjust the size to make it bigger. The rule of thumb is to not cross this limit. So 30 looks okay for now. Hit apply. By holding your shift key, use your arrow keys to move the text accurately around two times. After that, we need to add the additional card name just below the 5090 Ti. While holding the shift and alternate key, drag the duplicated text just below 5090 Ti. Double click on it to adjust the text. Name it a Super TI or any names that require that. You can change the font to Arial Bold to create more variation to the thumbnail. And then adjust the size to make it fit just below the 5090 TI. You can change the kerning or spacing between characters by opening this properties tab. If you don't see that, you can navigate the windows tab at above. You will see this VA icon. You can adjust the value according to your need. For this example, I think minus 50 looks okay for now. You can always change it later. Don't forget to make it snap to the edge as well. Before that, Let's adjust the size to fit just below the 5090 Ti. Hit apply. Now hold your shift key, and then press the arrow down button about two times to put it below the 5090 Ti precisely. To make the background darker, create a new levels adjustment layer just below the GPU name text layers. Adjust the brightest point like you did on the FPS overlay previously. Select the layer mask, and then invert the mask. Select your rectangular marquee tool, and then make a square just slightly bigger to cover the GPU name. While holding your shift key, Add another square for the additional GPU name as well. With white being your primary color, press alternate plus backspace to fill that area with the dark. Press Ctrl plus D to deselect. If you feel like the background is too dark or too bright, you can always tweak that later. Here's a tip. If you don't want it to look too bright or too dark, you can find that balance by changing the document background. That way you can simulate the YouTube page on normal and dark mode. Select your layer mask, and then make sure your rectangular marquee tool is activated. Start making a square like this at the bottom left corner of the background. You can still adjust it to make it bigger. Hit apply, and then pick your polygonal lasso tool on the left side. While holding the alternate key, 
make a rectangle like this to cut it out from the selection. Make sure your primary color is black, and then press alternate plus backspace to subtract. Do the same for the additional card name as well. Remember that you can always tweak it later if you are still unhappy with the cut. After that, we need to add the drop shadows on the GPU name. For that, select the text layer and then double click on it. Leave a tick on drop shadow option to enable it. Set the blending mode to multiply and pure black color with 100% opacity, and then change the angle to 180 degree. Distance is set to 2 pixels, and the size also 2 pixels. You can see the before and after adding drop shadow. Hit OK there. To copy the layer style to additional card name, hold your alternate key and then drag this drop shadow filter to that layer. We have done with the card name. Now we need to add a green gradient to the text because this is an NVIDIA card. For that, create a gradient adjustment layer, but first, we need to create a clipping mask so that only the GPU name will get affected and not the entire canvas. Open your gradient and expand the green section. Select this yellow and green gradient for NVIDIA cards. Now we need to adjust the properties for it. The yellow color has to be on the left side and transition started between 50 and 90. Adjust the position until it looks good. You can reverse the angle as well. Hit OK there. Select your layer mask. Pick your rectangular marquee tool and make a square on RTX to select it. With your primary color set to black, press alternate plus backspace to exclude it from the gradient. Press Ctrl plus D to deselect. Select your Super TI layer, and then create a gradient adjustment layer. Create a clipping mask like usual. This time, you can expand the grays section. Select this kind of gray. On the first stops, you can change the color to pure white by typing 6 times F. Hit OK there. Now adjust the position and angle to make the white color is pointing up and dark gray at the bottom. Hit OK there. You can hold your Shift key and then select the first GPU name layer to select all from this range. Put these layers into a group and rename it. We have done with the GPU name label. Now we need to add the resolution label that you are testing. For that, create a text below the GPU name label. Align it to the right as well. And then change the font to Arial Bold. You can start typing the highest resolution first to be on the most left. Use double space to exaggerate the separation between resolutions even more. You can change the size according to how many resolutions that you are testing. Hit apply. Activate your move tool, and then move the layer about three times to give more space from the GPU name label. Below the resolution layer, you can create a dark background for that text as well. Repeat the same steps as previously. Make a square just to fit the resolution text. You can adjust the transform for that selection to make it bigger. Once you satisfied, hit apply. With your primary color is set to white, fill that selection with the effect. Press Ctrl plus D to deselect. You can always tweak the adjustment as many times as you like. Similar to the GPU name label, we need to add the drop shadow to this text as well. Double click on the resolution text layer, and leave a tick on the drop shadow as the previous adjustments are still intact. Hit OK there. Now above the resolution text layer, Create a gradient adjustment layer. Create a clipping mask like usual. Expand the green section and select the same gradient as the NVIDIA card name. Start adjusting the angle and position to match the playability. The most playable resolution should be in green color. Meanwhile for OK-ish okay playable resolution should be in between yellow and green color. Hit OK there. Now select your layer mask and make a square at 4K or the other resolution that you want to mask out from this gradient. Change your primary color to black and then press alternate plus backspace to subtract the area from the gradient. Press Ctrl plus D to deselect. Now we also need to create a gradient for 4K resolution, so create another gradient adjustment layer. Create a clipping mask like usual. This time, expand the oranges section. Select this saturated yellow orangish gradient, then play around with the settings. The orange color should be on the left side to indicate unplayable resolution. Hit OK there. Select the layer mask and then mask it out from the other resolutions in green gradient previously. Press Ctrl plus D to deselect. Make a group for this resolution label layers to be more organized as well. Now we need to add the graphics settings labels, so create a text just below the resolution label like this. Change the font to Agency FG Bold Back, and then type in your highest settings as the first option. Hit Apply. Here you can also adjust the kerning. In this case I want it to be at default, so set the value to zero. Select your Move tool, and then move it about three times while holding your Shift key. You can still adjust the size by double clicking on the text, and then adjust the left marching ants to fit just below the 1080p label. Select the text and then align it to the center, adjust on the right side as well to make it look more balanced. Hit apply, you can also move it further if you want. Below your first graphics label layer, create the same dark background like usual. Select your rectangular marquee tool and make a square just to fit the text, and then transform the selection until you satisfied. Hit apply, with your primary color is set to white. Press alternate plus backspace to fill in the selection. Press Ctrl plus D to deselect. You can still adjust the value to fit with the entire image. Put these two layers into a group. Select the text layer inside. Double clicking on it and add the drop shadow as well. Hit OK there. You can also move the entire group if you feel the gap is too much. Select the text layer and then create a gradient adjustment layer. Create a clipping mask like usual. Expand the green section like previously. Select the same yellow and green gradient. Adjust the position and angle so that the yellow color are pointing down and green pointing up. Hit OK there. If you are still not satisfied, 
you can still adjust it until you are happy. Now for the bells and whistles, you can just duplicate the first graphics label group by pressing Ctrl plus J, and then Ctrl plus T to transform, and move the second graphics label below the first one. Hit apply, double click on the second text and then change the text to the feature that you use in the game testing. Double click on the gradient layer and expand the purple section, select the pink and purple gradient like this. Like usual, adjust the properties to make the purple pointing down and pink pointing up. Hit OK there. If you think it looks too dark, you can create a levels adjustment layer. Create a clipping mask by clicking on this button, and then play around with the values until it looks good. To add even more features, you just need to duplicate the second label group again, and then transform the group and put it below the second label. Hit apply, double click on the third text layer and then change the text. You can change the size to make it fit inside the dark frame. You can still adjust it until it fits well. Disable the levels adjustment layer in this group, and then change the gradient. This time, select the green and yellow gradient for Nvidia card, or yellow and orange gradient for AMD cards. Adjust the position and angle like you did previously. Hit OK there. You can duplicate the group as many time you like according to your video. Transform it and move it below the third features label. Hit apply, and then double click on the text to change the text and size according to your need. Select the layer mask and then reshape the background frame to fit with the new text label. Hit apply, double click on the gradient layer and this time around, select another gradient to give more variation. For frame generation, you can use this cyan and blue gradient. Adjust the position and angle to make the blue pointing down and cyan pointing up. Hit OK there. Enable the levels adjustment layer inside this group and then adjust it until you satisfied. The last thing left is to put your reaction picture on the bottom left corner, so drag that image into the canvas. For this example, I will just use a mim, but for your video, you should use your own reaction picture. After you have done placed it, you need to create a layer mask by pressing this button. Pick your pen tool and then start tracing your picture to remove the background. And again, I don't want to bore you to death here, so I will speed up the process. As you can see here, I have done with the cutout. Now press Ctrl plus T to transform it and then make it smaller like this and put it on the bottom left corner. Your picture should not exceed your FPS counter overlay here. Hit apply. Now if you see your picture is not bright enough, you can brighten that up by creating a levels adjustment layer. Create a clipping mask and then messing around with the values until your picture looks bright and nice. You can see the before and after here. Now this is optional. If you want your thumbnail to be more recognized of which game this is, you can put the game title PNG here. So import that PNG into the canvas. Just get it on Google. Now press Ctrl plus T to transform and then make it smaller as well. Place the game title PNG beside the FPS counter overlay like this. While holding your shift key, move the game title PNG about two times. If you feel like your gameplay screenshot is not vibrant enough, you can enhance these colors by creating a vibrance adjustment layer. Create a clipping mask, and then set the vibrance to plus 69 should be nice. Now all the thing left is to tweak until you truly satisfied. You can take all the time in the world to do that. We have finally done. You can get creative and add your own touches with these techniques. The possibilities are endless. I hope this video can inspire you to create better thumbnails and start your own gaming benchmark channel on YouTube. If you're thinking of starting one, this is the right time to do so. That's pretty much it. I hope this video was helpful, and if it does, feel free to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. I will see you in my next tutorial. Bye.